By golly, I think you just found the hottest videos on penny stocks on YouTube. Truly. <laughs> I'm John Zadar. This is On Top and Hot. And this is Monday. It's October 28th. Now, we're going to do what I like to do. We're going to focus in on a hot penny stock. I trade penny stocks every day. I'm a day trader. And I'm always looking for a stock under five bucks that has heat, that has potential to make us some money. And I do believe I found one for us. This is Spoozy, ticker SPZI, Spooz Inc. Now, I found this stock last Friday, and I wanted to share it with you then, but I don't make videos on Friday because all of you go out. There's nobody there to watch it. And on the weekend, I had a different video planned, so we had to wait until Monday. But don't you worry, none. We're not late. So the reason I wanted to share Spoozy with you was that I had seen some buzz online that this stock was expected to jump a hundredfold, a hundred times her price. Last week, she was at 005. A hundred times would go up to 50 cents. But to put it in terms you can relate to better, a hundred dollars invested at 005 is worth $10,000 at 50 cents. <laughs> Mind boggling, right? So definitely want to take a look at this. But you want to know, is there any legitimacy to this buzz? There is, folks. There is a lot going on with this company. I got a lot of information to share with you. And there is a foundation for why they think this can go up a hundredfold. And I'm going to share that too. So Spoozy, she finished the day today at 0073. She's starting to climb and she was up almost 3%. Now this is a hot penny stock out of New Jersey on the OTC market. She's on the bottom tier, the pink, which is the riskiest tier because you don't get a lot, if any, validated information down here. Normally, the only validated information you get, and you only see it on the otcmarkets.com website, is a company verified profile and a transfer agent verified. Why do you only see them here? Because it is the OTC markets that does it, an unbiased third party. This is their business. This is what they do. So as far as pinks go, this is looking okay. Now they tell us she's a shell risk. This says that they're in business. They're doing something, but they're not reporting any revenues. Poppycock. They have revenues on the books, so this shouldn't be there. It's probably going to fall off in a short amount of time here. So what is Spoozy all about? Well, first off, it really isn't Spoozy. They got a different name. Spooz Inc. is in the process of changing its name to JP3E Holdings. JP3E Targets, 3E Industries. Energy, eatables, and education based around real estate. And to get more information about this, we're going to dive on over to their website, jp3e.com. Now, I'm going to start down here at the bottom. We'll work our way up. JP3 Holdings has two main subsidiaries, JP Energy Global and JP Energy Group. JP Energy Global is dedicated to LNG, liquid natural gas trading worldwide starting from china and europe still on their website here jp energy global is sourcing and supplying competitive lng to china and europe in cooperation with its partners based in the middle east countries such as saudi arabia qatar oman and southeast asia in addition europe has rapidly been emerging as an important lng demand region and this is how they ship it, with these huge vessels. That's how they do most of their business that you're going to see that we're going to talk about, including what JP Energy Group does. They're dedicated to trading sugar, chicken paws, which are chicken feet. Take off the leg, just give them the feet, pull off the nails, and you eat it. Not very popular in America, but it's popular in a lot of other places in the world. They sell agricultural products as well as metals, too. Now, as I said, I got a lot of information I want to share with you, and it's not exactly in chronological order. It's more in build order, the way I think it should be laid out. We are going to start off with the most recent financial. I've gone all the way down to the bottom to subsequent events, things they list in the financials that didn't happen while the financials were being filled out, but need to be mentioned. So starting here with their acquisitions, JP3E Holdings, completed the acquisition of a majority stake of Power Engineering Corporation, PEC, 
from Imperial Holdings, Inc. The acquisition is a strategic expansion move that aims to significantly enhance JP3E's presence in the liquefied natural gas sector through PEC's advanced capabilities. JP3E Holdings, Inc. also completed the acquisition of a majority stake in Blocks Cross, Inc. We're going to hear more about them. They did that July of this year. Blocks Cross is a trailblazing digital assets innovation company renowned for its groundbreaking platform that revolutionizes global bilateral trade, cross-border payments, and financial applications through advanced blockchain technologies. In 2023, Blocks Cross successfully completed $135 million in global transactions and therefore reportable as revenues. However, those revenues and other results of Blocks Cross operations are not included in these financial statements since the acquisition was completed after the end of the quarter. So this is going to show up in the next one, along with those revenues, right? They did $135 million that they couldn't put in here. And finally, JP3E Holdings completed the audit of the company's financials for 2023 and 2022 with Austra Audit. They need two years auditing completed if they're going to uplist, which is exactly why they did it. This is the first step toward achieving its goal of uplisting first to the OTCQB. They've got a lot of news, and I'm not going to go all through these, but there are quite a few of them I want to look at. I'm going to headline them right now, and then we'll dive into the ones that I want to pull out little pieces of information for. This will actually be the last piece of news that we read, though it is the oldest piece. JP3E Holdings acquires $34.5 million appraised value property at 510 Hamilton Real Estate. We're going to go more into that as the last piece of news I'm going to look at because this is where the hundredfold kickup comes in. In July, the company completed the acquisition of their stake in Blacks Cross, and in August, it was up and running. Black's Cross was. In September, the company announced their first aluminum ingot shipment using the trade finance platform with Black's Cross. They got an order for, I think it was 500 metric tons of aluminum, and they are selling it for about $2.5,000 a metric ton. So you're looking at roughly $1.5 million in that business transaction. A couple weeks later, they had their second aluminum shipment with Blocks Cross Trade Finance Platform. This one was three times as big, so it's going to be three times as much money. You're probably looking at $5.5 million on this deal with five or $1.5 with this one. That's going to give you like $7 million just between those two deals. The company announces first shipment of chicken paws to China. There's a lot of chicken paws being shipped, folks. JP3 Holdings accelerates growth with major corporate milestones towards uplisting. And then their most recent piece of news, the company and China Petroleum Technology, as well as Development Corporation, China's largest international trading company, announce a partnership. Now let's dive into these pieces of news and pull out little tidbits that we can get some juice from. This one is about them uplisting. These strategic initiatives include steps to uplist to the OTCQB market, filing the Form 10. Once they get to the OTCQB, then we start getting a lot of validated information. First off, the stock has to be at least a penny to be on the QB. We are getting close. We're almost there. We shouldn't need a reverse stock split to do it. If we fall under a penny for too long, they can be kicked back down to the pinks. Uh, along with that, we are going to get Form 10s. This is SEC filing. You have to have a CPA audit your financials. So we're going to get real, actual, factual numbers that we can use to weigh up the company. These are called fundamentals. They are also going to have that shell risk removed. They are going to get involved with a comprehensive rebranding, including their name and ticker change as well. One other piece of information we definitely want to grab from here, JP3E Strategic Roadmap includes uplisting from the OTC markets to the OTCQB with no plans of doing a reverse stock split. Told you they wouldn't need one. <laughs> the next piece of news, JP3E announces first shipment of chicken paws to China. The company announces that they have 
a deal for chicken paws. Their first shipment has been loaded and departed in September of 2024 for grade A chicken paws to China. The chicken paws are sourced from Brazil and South America in what marks the beginning of a new revenue stream for JP3E. A lot of these pieces of news we're reading, the aluminum, the chicken paws, these are repetitious. They're going to be sending these over and over again to the same customers. This is the most recent piece of news, the three-way partnership. The company announces a major strategic partnership with China Petroleum Technology and Development Corporation, China's largest international trading company. This partnership marks a significant milestone with the first coal shipment initiated under the collaboration, utilizing Black Cross's proprietary trade finance platform. Boy, that Black Cross is helping them. This is how they get their, their deals. People come shopping like on eBay or Amazon, except it's Black Cross and they're selling chicken feet or chicken paws and coal and sugar and all sorts of stuff like that. The shipment consists of 50,000 metric tons of coal sourced from Indonesia. This transaction is a key step in the larger agreement between JP3E and CPTDC aimed at driving growth in the energy sector. Another contract that's just going to keep going. CPTDC has developed stable, large-scale markets in Central Asia, Russia, Africa, the Americas, and the Middle East, as well as the Asia-Pacific regions, and maintain sound and collaborative relationships with 3,400 partners and 1,100 international staff. Since its establishment over 30 years ago, the company has accumulated over $44 billion in contract value. Now, I found another deal that is not listed in the news, but it is over here on their Twitter account. Nice to do your DD everywhere, isn't it? This came out three days ago. Boozy is pleased to announce a new partnership with Orbit Space. The vision of Orbit Space is to lead the world in sustainable resource extraction technology advancements and visionary real estate development, driving progress and prosperity for generations to come. This partnership with Orbit Space extends our logistical capabilities across all areas of the globe through their well, wholly owned subsidiary Complex Logistics, who facilitates cargo delivery and supply chain management to both regions of growth and regions of adversity. Folks are talking about air transportation now when they've already got the oceans covered. They've got lots of ships moving across the ocean. Now they're going to be moving it across the air. They're killing it, folks, from top to bottom here. Now, the last piece of news I want to talk to you about, it's a little interesting because this is where the hundredfold kick comes in. This is the oldest piece of news we've got. It came out July 18th. Let's break this down so I can explain it to you. The company announced the addition of our first of several real estate purchases, which falls into the educational real estate platform. The 510 Hamilton real estate property was acquired through a signed membership interest purchase agreement with Hamilton Street Associates LLC and was appraised by AF Lama Realty Service and added appraised value of $37.5 million with $14.5 million of equity already in it. The 510 Hamilton property is cash flow positive and currently generates approximately $200,000 in monthly income and is on track to generate $2.4 million annual rental income for 2024. Now pay attention to these next two sentences because this is where it all comes from, folks. JP3E acquired 510 Hamilton for $24 million with a $150,000 closing fee. $14 million is in the form of 70 million warrants exercisable at 20 cents and 10 million in the form of 20 million Series C preferred stock at 50 cents per share. The acquisition of 510 Hamilton will bring immediate value to JP3E, strengthening our balance sheet and income statement. A larger real estate acquisition will be announced in the coming days to reflect our commitment to bringing significant value to JP3E. 
I will also be converting my 100,000 personal loan to common stock at two cents per share to eliminate such JP3E debt. So when it hits two cents, he's going to buy himself $100,000 worth of stock off the market. Now let's get to the real point. How is this going to go up a hundred fold? Where do we see that in this piece of news? It all comes down to these warrants, folks. Warrants are coupons that you can use to buy stock at a cheap price sometime in the future. It could be just a few months. It could be a few years. It depends if the warrants are active or not. Well, these warrants, one for 14 million and one for 10 million are not available yet. The prices haven't been hit. He can cash in these $14 million worth of warrants at 20 cents. When we hit 20 cents, he can sell them. The other 10 million, he can sell when we hit 50 cents, a hundred fold up. Now, is this going to make the stock jump a hundred fold? No, but this is what it does. The CEO, the owner of this, he doesn't get to sell his warrants. He doesn't get to cash them in and make his money until the stock hits 20 cents and 50 cents. So he is going to do everything he can to put this company in the spotlight and get it growing. The sooner he gets to 20 cents and 50 cents, the sooner he gets his money. He gets his money back out of this. So he's going to be putting up all sorts of news, shining big bright lights on what's going on. He's going to make sure that the brightest side of the company shines. And if he does his job right, gets this thing uplisted to QB, we could see this thing really start to move. Now, can it go to 50? I don't know, folks. They call me the wizard, but honestly, my ball has no insights to the future. I really can't see that stuff. But we've got purpose. We have a reason for it to run. And God, they've got a lot of business right now. They have just got that new contract for coal. They've got one for aluminum. They've got one for uh, chicken paws. They've got them for sugar. They've got a whole bunch of them, folks, and all of them are bringing in money, but we just don't see all that money yet. But we are going to see it on the next financial. So let's take a look now at some of this information about the stock. Let's take a look at the relative volume. It's about the same. She's been doing about roughly 17 million every day for the last 30 days, 16.9. Today, she did 16.7. She was, she was down just a little bit. Looking at the share structure. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm glad they said they had no plans to do a reverse stock split because that's a lot of shares. I would be telling you right now, they're approaching a penny. They're on the pink. They're getting popular there's going to be a reverse stock split because this is normally all the token signs we see just before one happens. But he said they have no plans for a reverse stock split. So we've got 5.8 billion shares in the outstanding share count. That's virtually all of them, folks. 5.8 billion is all they've got. And they've got 5.799.9 billion shares on the market, which isn't really great. They're out of shares. This is how they make money. If they need more money, they put them on the market and they sell them. Not just to us, to big investors. I don't even think there's enough there when he wants to buy his $100,000 worth at two cents. I'm not sure there's enough shares there. So they have to do one of two things to refill the authorized share count, their bank. They either have to ask for more shares, increase the authorized share count, or do a reverse stock split. They do a reverse stock split. All those shares go right back into the authorized share count and they'll have some left over to sell, but they say they're not doing that. Insiders own about 366 million of these shares. We get all the rest, 5.4 billion shares. That can make it tough for the stock to move. Taking a look at the financials, we got nothing annually, no money coming in, but we got money that just came in right here. Now, this came out June of this year. We should have already had one come out for the third quarter. I went and looked. It is not out yet. We're expecting that out anytime now. And I'm expecting some bigger numbers on there. They had that acquisition where they did, what was it? 127 million or 300? I don't know. They did millions of dollars worth of business, 
but it wasn't on the books because it happened after the financials were filed. But the next financial is going to show that. So I'm expecting the finances to jump big. I mean, really big. Right now, we're at 1.8 million. Cost us 1.4 million. We only got to keep about a half a million dollars in profit. Well, heck, when you start bringing that $8 million from all those shipments they've already had and the other ones they didn't give us prices on, like the chicken paws and the coal, we didn't get any money revealed in the newsletters, the news presses. But they're going to have lots of money coming from lots of different streams that are all going to show up probably in the next financial, which is due at any time now. Taking a look at our balance sheet. We got three zeros to add into all these numbers in case I didn't say that. $68,000 in the bank. Wow, assets is really low. $549,000. Liabilities is up. It's higher, but not by much. $748,000. Oh, something strange here happened. We should have been down roughly $200,000 here in deficit for stockholder equity, but we're not. We're up $200,000, not down. Something happened. We've got numbers here with retained earnings and capital surplus. These come into play, and I'm not quite sure how the math works out, but it worked out in our favor. We do have 200000 in stockholder equity. We do have revenues coming in. We are making profits, and all of that should be really growing a lot right now. We just can't see it, but we should in the next financial. And then taking a look at our disclosures. Please, my disclosures. <laughs> All right, as we wait here, all right, there's our most recent financial. It came out August 14th, but it was for June 30th. So we have another one that is due right now. And any other SEC filings on the pink, you normally don't get any filings. So we haven't had anything since 2008. But once they go to QB, we'll start getting 8Ks, 10Ks, 10Qs. We'll start getting a lot of information on this company. So there is a lot going on, folks. They've got numerous deals working across the ocean with these giant ships. They're now working with these products in the air as well. They've got lots of shipments they've already sent, money already coming in, deals they've already closed with companies that are making revenues. I mean, it sounds super good to me. All right, let's go take a look at this chart now. You know where we're at, my free trading platform, Think or Swim. And we're taking a look at Spooz Inc., ticker SPZI. And we got Spooz opened up to a one-day, one-year chart. It was a full year ago. She had her 52-week low, the absolute low you can possibly be on the open market. She was at 0001. By May, she had hit a 52-week high of 1.3 cents and then started to fall off of that high. Going through the 200, falling down here to 003 roughly, and then bouncing up and breaking our 200 on the yearly chart. It's looking pretty good. We got lots of supports and resistances here because I am watching this stock. Let's take a look at our six month, four hour view. Well, isn't that interesting? We got our high bubble right there of 1.3 cents, and the very next day she hit the absolute low again, triple zero one. But it was short-lived, folks. She just stabbed it and jumped right back up here, only to go into that downtrend and continue falling. And it was right here, October 22nd, that the news came out about that three-way partnership with the company, the most recent news, and this is when she started to climb. She was down at a low here of 0028. She hit a high of 0078. You're looking at 200, 250% run there in the last four to five days. All of our MAs are climbing now. Our 200 haul, our 50 and our 20 are all turned up and climbing. And the price is just floating on this nine-day MA. But it is kind of high from it right now. You need to keep the price close to these MAs or it will pull back. So we're watching for a pullback probably. Our oscillators look really good on the four-hour. Every single one of them is climbing hard and going to the moon. Take a look at our 20-day, one-hour view. Well, she was in a downtrend here. She was underneath the 200, pulling away from it, falling further and further, hitting this low bubble of 0027. And off of that, on the 22nd, she bounced and she started her climb. And look how she is just hugging up against that nine day MA. Pulled back a little bit here. I told you she was going to need to. She started getting some distance and now she's starting to climb again. 
everything looks climbable. All of our RMAs are nice and evenly spaced going up. Our oscillators do show a little bit of pullback. You can see they're starting to level off right now. But if we look a little closer here, looks like our MACD is trying to come up right now. And our RSI is just about ready to touch the overbought. Overbought's good. That's heat. That's a lot of heat. Let's take a look at our five day 15 minute. Oh, come on, folks. That's looking beautiful. From that low bubble, she has been climbing easily, slowly, steady. I don't know if you want to scalp this. This looks like a nice swing trade to me. She's up here on a support now at uh, 0069. You can see she got on top of it, jammed on it real hard here, and she's laying on it right now as our MAs are climbing. Here's our 50 day MA tagging the price. This could help it. This could be the smack it needs to push it. If you can get over top of that 200 haul, she'll get another boost of energy and start to climb again. Our oscillators were taking a dip, but they've all kind of leveled off and they're just now starting to come up as you can see with our RSI starting to jump. But that is clear down there at 54. I don't want to see it any lower than 55. So the chart is looking good. I can't say she's in any breakout mode or anything like that. She's actually breaking out right now, but she's climbing slowly. We got lots of different catalysts. We've got lots of revenues that are about to appear on the next financial, which should be coming out anytime now. And you've got the, the CEO who wants the stock to be at 20 cents and 50 cents so that he can exercise his warrants and get all that money. So whatever he can do, he's going to do. He's going to do it honestly, but you know, he'll keep that news coming. He'll let us know every good thing that is happening. So I've got my eye on Spoozy and I think you should too. Now there's a lot of information we didn't cover. So please, as I always tell you, do your own due diligence behind me. Really all I'm doing is bringing this to your attention, sharing enough information to get you curious, to get you excited. If I've done my job right, you should be doing your own due diligence now. Remember folks, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks.